And before I get to my message, I want to say one other thing. Last night, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, you know, I was talking about what I'm going to bring, and I was thinking about bringing the same message I brought in Florida, although it's different because it's geared for a church. But the one thing that God said to me very clearly and very distinctly was the word go. Which my son said, go. That's all he said, go. And in praying about that, I feel that what the Lord is saying to me is, I don't know who it is, I don't know how many of it is, but there are some of you that are, that are, de determ are determining a decision. Which, what should I do? Should I go or should I not go? And I have no idea what that refers to. I have no idea who that is. All I know is what the Lord is saying to you, the decision you need to make is go. So if that's for you, I want you to receive it. Okay? And I, I don't need to know anything about it. I'm not, I don't explain it. That's just what the word of the Lord is. Go. And I want to say, and I want to start with this verse, Hebrews 2, 4, the New Living Translation. And God confirmed the message by giving signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit wherever he chose. Okay? Wherever he he chose. We are Pentecostals. We know that the work of the Holy Spirit continues to do signs and wonders and miracles. We come to church expecting to have an encounter with the Lord. That's our purpose for being here. Okay? We know that the Holy Spirit continues to work in signs and wonders and various miracles. We know that. And like Paul, all of us who stand up here and bring the message to you would say, as he said, our message and our preaching is very plain. Our, rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, we rely only on the power of the Holy Spirit. And we do this so that you will trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God, which brings me to the message that God has given me, okay? So I want you to put on your imagination caps. You know I like to use illustrations, but I wasn't going to go out and buy a door and have a stand up here because I had to buy the frame and everything else. I mean, I'm not unlimited money, but I want you to imagine a door standing next to me, okay? And I want you to imagine that door is open, and I am looking through that door, and what I see is darkness. And as I said, I think last week, one of the things that vision, that, this is vision that God gave me at the end of 2023, okay? And the Lord said, in this vision that God gave me, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut, Revelation 3, 8, and that's my verse and my wife's verse for the year. God has placed before us an open door that no one can shut. We went through that door to Florida. I had a great opportunity there. It was an awesome prophetic conference. I got to speak in another church, but it's just amazing. That is the first door that God took me through the open. I am expecting and waiting for other doors to stand before me and no person no demonic force, nothing will be able to shut that door. My son said, a very good thought, and by the way, when I'm talking to you guys, I refer to him as pastor, okay? I don't refer to him as for his first name. He may prefer that, but I don't, okay? You give honor where honor is due. Amen. You don't go to a doctor and call him by his first name. Okay, I had a very good friend in my church who was a doctor. I went to India with three times, and his, he, I called him Dr. Patrick. I did not call him his name. Okay, he, did, he earned that title. So I, get, I honored him by giving him that title, okay? So, how did I get off on that? Okay. <laughs> So then I heard the Lord say to me, again, imagine me standing there. I open the, God says, I open the door for you. And this is what he said to me. And maybe it's not what he says to you, but he said to me, you decide if you're going to go through it or not. So the word go is also for me. 
I make the decision if I'm going to go through it or not. But see, God opened the door. Why would God open the door for me if God didn't want me to walk through it? Why would God open a door for you if God doesn't want you to walk through it? Just make sure it's God's the one that opens it. Okay? That's where discernment of the Holy Spirit comes in. So I get to choose, and I have to make a decision. If I stand before that door and think, well, uh, maybe I should go through it. Well, maybe I shouldn't go through it. Well, I don't know. Maybe, uh, I don't know. Blah, 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 blah. I'm double-minded. I become unstable. And by not making a decision, I made a decision. Right? Yeah. I made the decision not to go through it because I'm standing there deciding whether I should make the decision to go to it. And as long as I'm doing that, I made the decision not to go through it. So I'd be better off to make the decision to go through it. And if I make the decision to go through it and realize I made a bad decision, I can go back up. But at least I made a decision. I wasn't unstable. Because when you become unstable in an area like that, you become unstable in everything. Okay? So he says, go, okay? So I get to choose. I make the decision, just like you make the decision. No one makes the decision for me, and I cannot make it for anybody else. I have to make it. Now, the Holy Spirit also showed me in that vision that there is many doors that will be before you. So imagine yourself standing here, and the door is open, and then there's other doors and other doors and other doors. There's a lot of doors that God is going to open for me and my wife in 2023, 20, 24, I'm sorry. Getting old up here. It's a, now it's the 28th day of the year. It's 28th day of the year. Do you know that? I've gone over the threshold, the first door, like I said, because I went to Florida. It was a real honor to preach with uh, Ivan. Yes, it was. So, but when I went over the door, I didn't go into 2024. I've gone over to the year 5784. In case you don't, now I talk, I talk about some of this on Wednesday night, so some of you are there, uh, got some of this, but uh, all of you don't attend the Bible study, so. In case you don't know what it is, it's the correct year. Does anybody know what 5784 stands for? A little teaching here. It's the day, be careful with your answers. It's the day that God cast Adam and Eve out of the garden, according to the Jews. That's what, 5,784 years ago. They have never changed their calendar. Do you know what year this is for us? What's the, what, what's the year on our calendar? It's an obvious answer, guys. I mean, <laughs> you're all struggling to figure it out. Do you know that the first year on our, you know, you know what the first year on our calendar was? What? 1582. The first year on our calendar that we currently use is 1582. Anybody know why it's 1582? Because that's the day our calendar was created. Before that, they were using the Julian calendar. And by the way, some countries still use it. 1584, Pope Gregory XIII said, we're going to date our calendar no longer on the Julian calendar, but on, the, on what we consider the birth of Christ. They were three to, two to three years off. So really, according to that calendar, it should be 2027 or 2026. Okay? So that's what, and by the way, they're trying to change it. It's no longer A.D., in B.C., it's before the common era, B.C.E., and after the, and the common era, which is C.E. But the funny thing about it is they still base it on Christ. Right. <laughs> so I'm waiting for them to figure out how they're going to get rid of that. Okay? But they're trying to change the calendar again. But the Jews have never changed it. So, it's fit, so I'm, going in, I'm going into 5784. Okay? Now I'm going to give you a little Bible lesson. Every Hebrew number has a word, a meaning, and a symbol. Come on. Okay? So the first, 5784, it's five. Okay? See that? Five. Hey, it worked. 
The word is H-E-I or H-E-Y. It's a symbol of a person standing with their hands lifted up, waiting for the Lord to give them a new revelation. Now, when I say new revelation, I don't mean anything outside of this. There are things in scriptures that we do not know. There are revelations in scriptures that God has hidden from us. I've been saved nine years old. I've been reading the Bible for over 60 years. Oh, no, not really. 77 and 9 is, yeah, it's over 60 years. I've been reading the Bible for over 60 years. I sit down in my office at 77 years old. I open up the Bible. I start studying, and I learn things that I never knew were in there in all these years. Okay? There are revelations in here that God wants to give you. Come on, God. That God wants you to know. So you become a person who is going to enter 5784, and you are going to lift your hands to the Lord, and you are going to wait for God to give you a fresh revelation from this scripture so that you know how he wants you to live. Waiting also stands for waiting to receive new manifestations of God's power. You want to see God work in ways that the word says he works. So when the Bible says God does something, God still does that today. It also stands for refinement, which means to improve yourself by making small changes. It's the little foxes that destroy the vine. And the way that is, the vines are very thick. And the little fox will sneak inside the vines and make his nest. And while he's in there, he nibbles on the vines. And all at once, your whole vine is starting to die, and you don't know why. So it's the little things in our life that God is saying, I want to get rid of. I want you to get rid of those little foxes. It's also waiting to have your normal pattern Disrupted, Isn't that what our pastor said a few minutes ago? It's also waiting. You're waiting on God to disrupt the normal pattern of your life. We don't need prophets telling us doomsday prophecies. Just turn on the news. Okay? We're on the verge of war with China. We're on the verge of war with Russia. We're on the verge of, a, of an economic collapse. The president, of CEO of, of Chase Bank, said we're on, we're on the verge of a financial revolution. And he didn't mean a good one. Okay? We're, we're on the verge of all those things. Okay? So we don't need anybody to tell us how bad things are going to get. Because we're, we're going to let the Lord disrupt the normal patterns of our life. And we are not going to live in 2024. We are going to live in 50. 784. Okay, that's five. Now we go to seven. The word is Z A Y I N. The symbol is a plowshare. Anybody remember a plowshare? Yep. The old days when you, you know, symbol is a plowshare. It's an instrument that cuts open and removes in order to make room for new growth. Okay? It prunes. So God is saying, step over. Not only am I going to disrupt your normal pattern, step over and get ready to be pruned. See, God hates rotten and bitter fruit. Come on. Nobody can eat it. Except a banana. You know, you can eat a rotten banana. I wouldn't want to, but. Get ready to be pruned, the Lord says, and enjoy a healthy, healthier physical <coughs> spiritual, and mental life. Okay, then we come to number eight. C-H-E-T. <coughs> I'm going to take a little longer with this one. You got the letter eight, you got the symbol, and you also got <coughs> the Hebrew uh, letter, the Hebrew letter. The symbol is two horizontal lines <coughs> with three vertical lines between them like a gate. Open the gate and God and see what God has, and it applies to <coughs> if you open the gate to the Lord in this coming year, 
God has a special gift for you. Okay, I have no idea what that is. <coughs> thank you. I think Lee's getting me some water, which I need. I always, oh, Kevin, thank you. <coughs> Give a prophet a gift, get a prophet's reward. You all had the opportunity. It stands for God wants. It's all right. He gets the reward, too. It stands, as I said, God wants to give you a special gift. It's your gift. It's not the gift that was from somebody else. And it's not re-gifted. Okay? It's a gift that God has chosen just for you. Valentine's Day is coming up. Actually, I should say St. Valentine's Day. I reject the fact that they got rid of the, the saint part. If you don't know who St. Valentine is, it's a good history to study him and teach your kids who he is. Okay? He gave his life for Christ. Catholic Church made him a saint. We're all saints. Didn't need to be made one. But they don't say St. Valentine's Day anymore. They say Valentine's Day. Okay? They say it's based on love for each other, what's really based on the love that Christ has for you. It's really what it stands for. But I'm, I'm looking forward to that special gift that's just for me. Okay? It also refers to knowledge and understanding that will give you wisdom on how to live. So I believe that special gift that God wants to give us is knowledge and understanding of how God wants us to live through 2024. Even though we're going to live in 5784, we're still going to have to be physically in 2024, okay? We're still going to have to be there. There's a lot of fear out there, a lot of things happening out there. Inflation jumped another, what, 3%, and everybody's panicking all over again, okay? Knowledge and under God wants to give you knowledge and understanding that will give you wisdom on how to live. Wisdom that will flow out of your mouth to those living in 2024 and greater wisdom to operate with increased authority over your finances and your health. But I want to talk about the symbol, the Hebrew, Hebrew symbol, okay? The Hebrew letter. It's a vertical line connecting two horizontal lines. It speaks of life based on a relationship. The Hebrews teach that if you do not have a relationship with another person, you only have half life. So you got two people, and you got a horizontal line across the top. That represents God. Okay? So you got you, another person, and you got God connecting you together. Okay? One shall put 1,000 to flight. Two shall put 10,000 to flight. Okay? It's God is the bridge that unites us. Okay? We, rec we receive from Christ everlasting life. God speaks to us. Okay? So now we go to number four. D-A-L-E-T. That, believe it or not, is a symbol of the open door. But they didn't have doors like we have doors. It's a tent door. Raise a flap. The symbol of a tent door. It speaks of being poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God, Matthew 5, 3. Poor in spirit refers to that you're humble to the point where you recognize that in this year, as every other year, as every other day of your life, you need God. You need God to move in your life. You need, you need God in every aspect of your life. You need God so much that you're generous and cheerful with an attitude towards God no matter what status your life is in. It does not make a difference your situation. I think um, Tisa, you know, she's always happy, okay? She doesn't let the condition and the situation that she is in interfere with or stand before the Lord. That's what this letter stands for. It also speaks of being lifted up. 
God lifts you above. God is, if you go into 5784, God is going to lift you above what you, know, what you think you're able. God is going to take you higher in your ability and functions to do what you want to do. So 5784, 2024, two different mindsets. Same year. I'm stepping into 5784, and I hope you step into it also. This is not really, this is my prophetic. 5784 is a year of stability. 2024 is a year of instability. 5784 is a year where you gain wisdom and insight, whereas they will gain ignorance and blindness and not be able to see what the problem is. We see that so much now anyway. 5784 is a year where you'll be getting stronger, and yet those around you will be getting weaker. I'm talking about, not physically, but I'm talking about spiritually. You'll be getting stronger, they'll be getting weaker. 5784 is a year of fulfilled visions and dreams in a year of lost visions and dreams. God is going to restore your visions. God is going to restore your dreams. 5784 is a year of strategic order in the life of God's people and disorder in the life of the world. So, go speaks of, in the Bible, go over, go up, and go on. It's what it is. Go over, go up, and go on. So go over, there's the door. So you go over the door. The indication is there is a hill before you, which means you've got to climb. You've got to make an effort. You can't just get on a little wagon or something and coast down a hill. You go through the door, and there is a hill before you, and you've got to go up, and you've got to make the effort to climb it. And even though it feels like you're getting tired and you wonder when this hill is going to end, you go on. Any situation in your life that's going to occur this year, you go on. Okay? That's what it refers to. Okay? So each time I go through a door, this is interesting. So you go through the door, and you go up to number eight. Okay? So you go through the door, and you stand waiting before the Lord to speak to you, okay? You go through the door, and you let God remove things in your life, little things in your life that are destructive and keeping you from going the, the way as much as God wants you to go. You go through the door, and there before you is this gate or this fence, and you open it up, and you walk into it and get what God wants you to do. So my goal of going over up and has to do with the 333, 337 days that are left in this year. I want to see God confirm his message by giving signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit whenever he chooses. Not when you choose. That's a message in itself. I want to see God perform miracles, perform signs, perform wonders in your lives throughout this year at his choosing. All you got to do is sit back and expect them and wait for them. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. A sign is an event that can only be done by God. There's, I was raised from the dead. Doctor said it was a miracle. Okay? A wonder is an event that is startling or amazing. All at once in your life, sometime in this, this year, some of us, God's going to do something that's going to amaze you. God gave me a whole year of amazement, 20 2014, he said, it's going to be a, a year where I'm going to amaze you. And I got, Margaret, I got a lot of amazements that year. Okay? Miracles. 
an event that is so extraordinary, astonishing, away from natural or scientific laws that nobody can deny it. An unsaved doctor declared that my coming back from the dead was a miracle. He could not deny it. I don't know how it affected him. I, every time I think of him, I pray, Lord, I wonder how much difference that made in his life. Okay? I wonder how much difference, you know, when he saw that. Gifts actually refers to the act of distributing. God is going to give gifts at his will, which means... He'll give it when he wants to give it. He'll give it when he pleases to give it. So my final word to you is go over into 5784. Go up the hill. And no matter what occurs this year, keep on going. Amen? And that's the message. So let's all stand.